Hi everyone, welcome back to Casual Watch Talk. This week I have another interview. Glad to welcome Mike France from Christopher Ward again. Thanks for joining us, Mike. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me, Sam. Mike, last time you joined us, we did an interview on the new Sealander range. The oh. feedback I had on that interview was overwhelmingly positive. That, that's, a, that's a relief anyway. <laughs> People on our Facebook, our Casual Watch Talk Facebook, a little plug, a few members that bought some. I've since become a, a Christopher Ward owner as well. Yes! Both Chris and I, Chris, my co-host on Casual Watch Talk, he bought a Christopher Ward a couple of weeks ago now. He bought one of your favourites, the Chronograph, the 70s. Oh, uh, 365 Chronograph. Yeah. Blown away by it. And I bought this... Um, this is the C60 Diver. I don't know why I never knew this, but... I didn't realise you did this in different sizes. So come on, I, come on, get up, get get I know, up with the program. I know, was, get with the program. I know, and I was amazed because I imagine these divers were all forty-two, and then as I started looking in the Sealander range, which are now a bit smaller, and I found this one at forty. I I mean, I love it. I've talked about it enough on the show. I I mean, I absolutely love it. The the design and everything. Yeah. Well, four, forty mil has become the um, the biggest size now. So, um, is that right? Yeah. That... Yeah. I mean, we, we we do three sizes in the Trident: so 38, 40, and 42, as you know, or you now know. Historically, 42 had always been um, the biggest size, but uh, reflecting, you know, what we know to be, and you know, and your listeners know only too well, the, the sort of downward trend in sizing in watches. Um, 40 millimeter, 39 round, anything around 38 to 40 millimeter is now, I think, the new sweet spot for most styles of watches but with a um a dive watch such as the trident 40 mil has become the the core size which is it's in line with a lot of other like luxury brands as well isn't it you you think of that how, uh, offering different sizes in watches as a luxury brand thing so like omega aquaterra obviously the date just is available in different different sizes as yeah. well it's great to see a brand like christopher ward offering that as well to some extent it's a volume equation if you're not rolex or omega and you're a relatively small independent brand such as us the sort of investment required to deliver a new case and they, uh, essentially a uh, every time you uh, you create a new size even if the design of the case is the same it's a new case um then it's quite a considerable investment so it's a volume thing and um you know, I'm pleased to say that uh, the Trident collection is uh, now sufficiently uh, big for us to be able to do those sorts of things, which brings me on to the Sealander, which you you, you kindly um, reviewed uh, last time we spoke. We've had a, the reaction has been astonishing. I mean, I think I probably said on the, on the cast at the time that, um, you know, we were hoping to create a new platform with the Sealander and you never really know. <laughs> until the customer speaks but uh, that is what's happened or is happening still relatively early days it was only launched in, my, in the collection was only launched in may as you know but we are able to read trends pretty well from early days onwards um we've this is it has been bigger than our expectation um by some considerable way we've been on pre-order on certain options from almost the second week um, and we're not like some of the other brands where um, these are genuine out of stocks. Uh, we're not trying to drum up uh, drum up false demand by pretending that we're out of stock. Um, it hurts me every time we can't supply a watch. Um, so these are genuine out of stock. Um, but it, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it, 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 it has become the. Um, I think it's it's actually likely to become a bigger platform than um, than Trident even. Um, so um, it's. Um, very exciting. And what's relevant about that is back to sizing is we are only, what time is it now in the UK? Um, it's, you know, it's just that one. Um, two hours ago, I had a meeting with the product development team and we are, we're looking, the, the volumes are big enough now for us to begin to look at a second size of the Sealander. Um, so um, uh, not, uh, not, conf not confirmed yet. Um, but um, but certainly that's uh, that's now looking like it's a real possibility. Um, so that would that's a that's breaking news on uh, on uh, on your podcast. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I got to review the automatic, which I suspected I would like, and I really really did love it. But I'm guessing that the 
GMT was the biggest seller, was it? Just well, it's interesting. It's interesting. The, uh, the you're not wrong in terms of um, cash. The GMT is uh, is the biggest in terms of volume. Uh, the automatic is because because there's a differential in price. Yeah. One of the big surprises to us, and we all assumed and we planned for the GMT to be the biggest, but the the automatic hugely bigger than we anticipated it being. Um, so uh, it's it's actually at the moment these things may change a little bit over time, but the automatic is um, is is uh, the biggest in terms of volume, which is um, uh, uh, really interesting and a surprise. I mean, I, you know, it's a, it's a it's a it's a great watch, uh, and I think because it's got um, you know, the value proposition, I think, is is unbeatable. Still, nobody has taken me up on the challenge of if you can produce a watch of equivalent um, equivalent quality um, at uh, at the same or price or below, I'll give you a free watch. Nobody's still taken me up on that challenge. And the challenge is still out there, but nobody's, uh, they're not beating a path to my door at the moment, I'm rather pleased to say. It. Chris and I talked about this on the last podcast that we launched, and I'm not, this isn't a, I'm not trying to turn this into a, a ginormous Christopher Ward advert, but... Oh, go on, do. <laughs> <laughs> but it it really made me th- rethink about value in the watch industry because especially uh, owning one and the, seeing the Sealander and then the original World Timer that I got, it's not often that you see a, ca- a case in that... Pri- a, a watch in that price range where you've machined the case yourself and there's a lot of design elements in it that you see in much more luxury watches. And even the new watches, which we'll get to now, where you've, mm-hmm. you're starting to move towards cost regulation, on, on watches that are starting at £1,000 have cost re- regulation in them and, and upwards. I know the new C60 one that we're going to be talking about is around that around that £1,000 mark it's amazing really what you've done for the sale price of the watches what what you've what technology you've put into them and unique design i think especially with things other companies like seiko who are they're trying to creep towards that price but it doesn't seem like there's a real technology improvements or design improvements that they're doing to the watches or or unique things or unique challenges that they're taking on yes i mean it's 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 great that i'm not a surprise when you receive a watch that you someone who knows watches like you sees the difference and um, and the difference is in the detail uh, it always is isn't it in, in everything it's about um uh, the closer you get to 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 an item that's purporting to be luxurious um the thing that separates it and makes it a proper luxury item or a proper a piece of um, crafted work is is the the quality of the finishing and the detailing around it and it is as it is in all areas of product, it is easy to ignore that and it's easy to overlook it. And it's easy to, um, for most people, most of the time, not for them not to notice it's missing. Um, we just take the view that, I mean, two things come into play for us. We are very transparent about our pricing. I mean, uh, as you know, and hopefully many of your listeners know, um, we have a very simple model which just multiplies um, the cost price of what we do by three, um, which is a very, you know, that's versus the, you know, most people out there will multiply by at least six, uh, some by 10, some by up to 34 times, um, which is uh, where we came into the brand in the first place because um, we thought that was horrific. Um, so, what we don't do is so we're very it's very it's very simple for us to 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 have a costing model yeah and the selling price is just three times that and what we don't do is we don't compromise on quality so what we're looking to do is deliver what brands that are selling at you know three four five thousand pounds and above are doing but applying our cost model to it. And in some cases, we're looking to improve on what they do because, you know, we are very fortunate to have some really excellent people um, working for Christopher Ward. Um, And I mean truly excellent people um, who uh, also share the same sort of values of hard work, of, you know, determination around 
creating something very special for people. So this is kind of built into, I'd like to believe anyone, I believe it is built into the ethos of the business. So the, from the designers through to the engineers, they're always trying to push forward. And that means it can be something, you know, quite very adventurous, like the creation of a of caliber SH-21 or a new JJ caliber, or the super compressor in the first in 50 years, or it can be much simpler, uh, a much simpler element, sort of making sure that the chamfering of a of a of a an hour hands finish is precise and 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 will catch the light in a certain way. And many people won't even know know that it's done. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Actually, the pleasure you get from these little details that are done when they're all added together, even if you don't know why. They're giving you some joy that of owning the product um, that you wouldn't get in the same way to the same extent if that those things hadn't been done. So my job is just to keep pushing people, hopefully not too hard, but pushing people towards executing things that are just that bit beyond where people would expect us to execute. And that's, as I say, and I don't often I don't have to I don't need to push people in. It, these guys are and girls are onto this themselves. That it's what they want to do. And and so as I say, when we talk about price, when you can when you own and see and have a crystal board in your hand or on your wrist, and you're able to compare it to other watches that are of the same sort of price or even often a lot more expensive, actually. I encourage people to look at the detailing because it's there that you'll see the difference. And I do think bit by bit, day by day, week by week, year by year, more and more people are beginning to realize that is the difference. And, um, you know, and, and that's what the brand is all about, really. Uh, it, it's greatest, its greatest exponents are the people who own the watches. Um, and, and by word of mouth, that's how we're most likely to keep growing. So, Mike, you've come back on the channel today to talk about new release. So, kindly you came on for the Sealander and now this new watch, which has got an important message behind it as well. But this is the new C60 Tide, which has been released today, which is the 27th of August, uh, 2021. I've got a picture of it up here. This is a yep. continuation of the, the Sapphire line, but with enhancements that have a important message behind them and a, a unique use of material so would you mind just talking us through the the new release sure i mean um yeah the c60 tide um derives its name from um tide ocean material which is a social enterprise that was set up by two amazing guys who happen to be the owners of reloba who are our major strap supplier um based in switzerland and Thomas Scorry, the CEO, and Mark Krebs, the CMO, uh, having seen untold pollution, plastic pollution in the Andaman Sea, particularly around Thailand and the Philippines, and understanding the impact that this was having on the many thousands of fishermen um, who form a number of tribes around that area who've been fishing these seas for decades, a combination of the plastic polluting uh, the ocean and overfishing through trawlers, particularly Chinese trawlers in that area, um, was destroying the livelihoods and forcing these, uh, these people um, out of their homes and the place they'd lived in for many years. So they determined to do something about it. And what they discovered is that by paying, incentivizing the local people, the local fishermen, by paying them exactly the same amount of money to fish plastic out of the ocean as they were previously being paid to pull out fish, um, they were able to pull huge amounts of, um, huge tonnage of plastic out of the ocean. They then pay these guys to um, sift it, sort it, and send it to the University of Applied Science in Bern in Switzerland, which at the moment is the only place that um, um, plastic can then be turned into usable, um, use, usable plastic um, and what the University of Applied Science does is it, it, uh, it takes um, it takes the, um, the 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 raw plastic material and turns it into several different types of material 
one of which is a yarn, which then Brilova turn into, weave into straps. And so we have now become, with Tide, the biggest retailer of, of these straps in, in, in the world. Um, and um, we wanted to celebrate the work that they are doing, um, because this is um, you know, profoundly important stuff in our view, and we're very much part of uh, trying to do our little bit to, to help global warming, to help overfishing, or to prevent overfishing. And we have a very strong relationship with, um, with the Blue Marine Foundation, who are, uh, whose, whose main aim in life is to, to prevent overfishing of our oceans. Uh, and so one of the things we wanted to do was to celebrate their work and bring attention to their work uh, by creating a watch. So the C60 Tide um, is, is a celebration, if you like, of the work that Mark, Thomas and uh, Tide have done to you know, uh, remove uh, this plastic from the oceans and make their contribution to, to, the, uh, to, to, to the whole environmental, environmental issue that we know we're uh, were surrounded by at the moment. The Tide, what C60 Tide itself, the strap is, uh, one of the straps is a specially designed strap for, for this particular watch, which is made of Tide material. But we've also been able to um, take a, another form of Tide material and embed it into the back plate um, so that um, uh, that element of the watch is also created from Tide material. And so with Tide as well, every time we sell a tied strap, whether it's on the C60 Tide or separately or on another watch, um, we're together, us and Tide, donating five pound to the uh, Blue Marine Foundation, who are our long-term partners in terms of um, uh, conservation uh, and, um, and environmental change. And with the COP26 meeting coming up in Glasgow in November, it seemed a really appropriate time or a British brand to take a bit of a lead. It's us doing our small bit to help bring attention to something that is, um, is, is without question the most serious thing that we're all confronted with. I became fascinated with the uh, subject from the Seaspiracy film that was on Netflix. That was definitely about over overfishing of the seas the incredible amount of, of plastic waste i mean you only have to watch the news to see that and it, it's a really incredible process to take that waste and weave it into such a fine material or fine yarn that you can weave a watch strap from it, it it's uh, i know oris have tried something i think oris have tried something in the past but your straps certainly look a lot finer. That weave was quite a, a, thi a, a, dent, a thick weave, I think, on the Oris watches. The beauty of the, the, the tied straps um, is, is both um, the, the luster that you get from them. But, I mean, in some ways, um, you imagine that, you know, um, weaving, uh, weaving um, a strap out of original plastic material is going to end up looking and feeling a bit plasticky. Um, the truth is, this is like um, a new canvas. It has that sort of um, quality of a high quality uh, canvas strap, and I think is due to replace canvas. I also think that um, I, I call I call them the new NATO uh, as well, because um, particularly on a quick release, because if you know, lots of people enjoy wearing NATO straps. I don't particularly wear it because all it does is they're complicated things to, to, to put on, they're difficult to change, but they increase the height of the watch. Yeah. Um, and I personally prefer watches to be sitting quite close to my wrist and on my wrist. And that's why that's what we've done in designing the light catch case, et cetera, to, 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 to make the, the watch sit more closely to the wrist. So with a quick release system and a tied strap, you've almost got what I'm calling the new NATO. Um, and, uh, you know, the reaction we've had to the straps we've, 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 uh, we've uh, put on sale thus far has been astonishing. They're, they're, not, they're the fastest growing part of our business. It's quite incredible. And of course, I think part of the appeal is the story that Tide have created behind this. The, you know, the, the rationale for these straps is so profoundly good uh, and the story is so an such an enriching story 
that people are really buying into it. So we would, you know, whether it's us or anybody else who's using tied material straps, you know, we would encourage more and more people to, to use these straps because in doing so, they're, they're contributing their small effort to, to the, the effort that the world is, uh, is trying to deliver for, um, to prevent uh, global warming. And the fact of it is um, that, you know, global, we're headed towards one and a half degrees of global warming, whatever happens now. Um, that, that I think is, is uh, the IPCC report that came out a couple of weeks ago confirms that. The, the challenge we've all got now is to keep it um, at 1.5 and not allow it to go above that level. And what isn't generally understood yet by people, but, pe but, but, but being better understood as time goes by, largely by the efforts of people like Blue Marine Foundation, it should be said, is that the importance of the ocean as a carbon sink is enormous. And, you know, not everybody has understood the value of the ocean in keeping climate, the temperature rises down. And we are at a tipping point, it would seem, talking to people like Charles Clover, who is the chief executive of, uh, of, um, of Blue Marine Foundation, you know, who's been trying to bring people's attention to this for more than 10 years now. And the good news is, the, he believes that a tipping point has been reached in people's understanding of the importance of the ocean in keeping climate change, climate um, change, uh, and temperature rises down, and that's um, that's a really, really important um, move forward. And the reason we think that, and he says that people haven't understood the damage that's being wreaked by trawlers to the surface of the the ocean, etc. So we don't see it. You know, the fact is that far more damage is being done to the environment, far more uh, carbon dioxide is being released into the atmosphere because of what's being done to the beds of our oceans than is being done uh, through, um, through the more obvious routes of uh, rainforest deforestation. But you see the, the rainforest deforestation, you don't see what's going on at the bottom of the ocean. So because we don't see it, we haven't recognized it. And therefore, it's gone on without anybody realizing the damage that's been occurring. If we look at the you know, Brazilian, the Amazon rainforest, we can see the acreage and the thousands of acreage every day that's getting destroyed. And of course, rightly so, people, uh, people are concerned. The damage that's being done to the oceans, as I say, is apparently far worse than that is being, that is being wreaked through uh, Amazon rainforest deforestation. So we have decided that as a watch brand that has a, you know, a, a that, that largely has its, you know, the, si the size of its business, the success of our business is in no small measure embedded in dive watches. Um, it's really appropriate that the thing that we focus on as a business uh, in terms of our environmental concerns is the oceans, which is why we tied into um, into the Blue Marine Foundation and why we are so happy to be working with Tide uh, and, uh, re and releasing the C60 Tide today. Yeah, when I watched that Sea Spiracy film, which I highly recommend on Netflix, it, it has its critics for sure, but the, I don't think, I think you're right about the core message about the oceans absorbing carbon dioxide and then the way that the, the fish move and migrate around actually helps to cool down the earth itself i found that fascinating and i think you're right to totally agree that that's not talked about enough the deforestation is obviously a visual but how the seas impact it and i know there's there's other brands that focus on this as well but not quite in the same way that that christopher ward's doing at the moment i know the, the well, guy yeah well, I think the watch industry can take great credit, actually, as an industry. I do, I do think. I mean, there's a, there's a. I think it was by Morgan Stanley last year. There's, a, they do a regular sort of um, review and uh, report on the, the watch industry, and they spoke to, you know, up to seventy CEOs of Swiss watch brands, and the overwhelmingly most important strategic imperative that those CEOs talked about last year for their brands. And was sustainability, um, and and so I think increasingly you're going to see more and more um, 
you know, projects that are involving sustainable uh, resources in the watch industry. And I do, I do think that the, the, the watch industry, you know, is, is ahead of many others in this regard and certainly aspires to be. And that's a, that's a good thing. So we're just part of it. And we, we, we just feel there's a, it's profoundly important that we do our bit, as I say, uh, and, in, you know, and, if, and if, if in so doing, we're encouraging others to do some, something, then fantastic. Um, but it's, uh, it, we, we, we're, we, we, we're, not, uh, we're not putting our heads above the parapet saying we're perfect, we're not. Um, but it's, um, it's, it's just a, you know, the most important thing I think any of us can be involved with at the moment. Yeah, and I know Oris certainly do work in the oceans and the guys over at Vea, they concentrate on the threat to sea urchins, which goes back to the ocean trawler um, situation that you were talking about. Well, let's talk about now the the watch itself. So this is the, it's an evolution or it's a version of the C60 Sapphire. Is, is, is that right? You're using that same sapphire wafer for the dial except there's you're adding an additional finish to it gives that wave pattern yeah the um the, it's it's quite an interesting um route we've gone down because um to represent the the ocean we wanted to to have a a wave pattern onto the dial but we also wanted the um the wave pattern to if it's possible to have a luminescence so that under loom you you you've got the sense of the the waves, and so the wave pattern is um, is printed superluminova, which is quite a difficult thing to achieve um, onto a sapphire dial. But I think the um, oh well, I hope others agree as well. I think the um, the result is is absolutely stunning um, to see the the wave pattern the loom just brings a whole new dimension of aesthetic to the to the to the beauty of the watch so that was quite a quite a an interesting uh, exercise in getting that right um, um but it's uh, it's uh, the watch itself is as you say a development on from the the sapphire it's 42 millimeter whereas the c60 sapphire is 40 millimeter uh, uh, we have on the crown and um, we've got the tide um logo not the CW Twin Flags logo, and also onto the um, case back, we've de de deep stamped the Tide logo as well, uh, which has got a highly polished finish. Um, all part of um, you know celebrating and, and bringing attention to their work, really. And um, so the uh, the uh, the the insert um, is is again extruded from um, from the plastics they withdrew from the ocean, which is again is. Uh, is created at the University of Applied Science by um, they produce in this for this um, particular execution the the inlaid part of the back uh, the case back it they produce granules which can then be injection molded so which is a different process to that which they use to create the straps obviously because you're turning those into yarn um, which then can can then be woven so the the insert into the case back is being developed. Um, and so that it can be injection molded. And one of the things we're quite keen to be working through is how many other components is it possible in other watches and generally in watches um, that we can use injected plastic moldings from uh, through uh, using tide, uh, tide ocean material. So um, it's an, it'll be an ongoing exercise um, uh, of, as we develop the relationship with Tide. Um, but a, um, a real, I mean, I, I just think it's uh, it's a, it's a uh, really interesting and aesthetically pleasing watch um, that carries a uh, that carries an interesting message with it. And as I say, you know, anybody who who buys um, buys a tied watch uh, with a tied strap or a tied strap separately, we and tied together will be donating um, money to uh, the Blue Marine Foundation so they can continue their fantastic work in the trying to prevent the, 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 the real concern of overfishing across the oceans of the world. So it's, 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 there's a lovely sort of symmetry and you know, it's circle. Uh, it's almost the, it's, it's a really, really a virtuous circle of uh, Tide, us and the Blue Marine Foundation in terms of this watch and what we're trying to do. So um, 
we're, we're very hopeful and very proud of, uh, of the watch. And, uh, but moreover, it's a great watch. I mean, and the, the most important thing is it's, um, is it a great watch to wear? Never mind all the other stuff. Um, you know, because uh, I think uh, there's a danger and even I can become a bit too worthy on this sort of stuff. So tell me if I am. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's about creating great watches that people want to wear. You know, that's, that's... Well, this is one of the other things that amazed me about this uh, watch. And I know this isn't necessarily unusual for Christopher Ward, but in the industry, it's very unusual, I would say, to have um, a watch coming in at... Um, just over a thousand dollars here 1100 i've got got here that is that you've gone through to get cosk certified i can't think of another watch in that price range that has cosk certification i mean normally you're looking well in excess of two thousand dollars if not more on the luxury side um yeah i mean um this is again something that um something that we increasingly do and have done we've always had cosk i mean uh, um the last cosk um, launch we had was uh, was the sealander elite we are one of the largest people using cosk in switzerland i was staggered to learn quite recently that uh, there are about somewhere in excess of 400 swiss watch brands it's quite staggering isn't it really and um of that, of uh, and Christ, little old Christopher Ward sits now in the top sixty for, of those Swiss watch brands by volume. And by volume, in terms of cost certification, we're in I think now the top twenty, and maybe higher than that. It's all about again, you know, what we were talking about earlier. It's about trying to deliver just that bit more. Now I can tell you, I don't know many people will even uh, admit to this, but you know. The cost process is a really, it's a really exacting process. I think it's good to explain this because it's, you obviously can have a watchmaker regulate a movement, but it, mm. it's not just a regulation of a movement, is it? It's a very involved no. process. It is. No, it's, it's not. Uh, it, it's about ultimately achieving um, accuracy of timing. So cost is accurate to, you know, guaranteed accuracy of minus 40 plus six per day versus, you know, most, um, a non a non cost um, you know watch mechanical watch without serious regulation is they'll only guarantee to plus or minus twenty seconds by and large so you're getting a much more accurate movement uh, but it, to to achieve cost certification firstly not all the movements not all the base movements that uh, can be put forward for cost a higher quality of movement to submit to cost the process takes around about three to four weeks so you already have to build in another three or four weeks into your lead time so you you have to send your movements over to the cosk and they will then take three to four weeks to put them through the processes and those processes are involving temperature um you know do how do how do how do the how do the watches perform in various temperatures so that they don't lose timing accuracy in various temperatures which of course all watches do. Um, it also then tests them in position. So in five different positions, again, what is the what are the parameters of, uh, of, of, of accuracy within positions? Because this replicates how we wear watches, yeah, um, or how we leave watches. You know, if, uh, if, we, if, we, if we take them off and leave them in a position, how will they over time um, respond to, in terms of accuracy? So it is a, you know, it's all about accuracy and it's all about maintaining accuracy in as best they can real life situations. So that's what we do. And of course that costs money. Um, and some people will apply huge increments to the cost of the watch for a cost certification. Uh, we're, at the risk of being boring again, you know, we applied the three times cost. So, so, so the, the cost, and I can tell you now, you know, I don't know, again, another first really for, for casual watch review, but, um, uh, you know, the, co the cost to us of um, uh, getting a movement certified by cost is, um, is about £50 sterling. Oh, wow. Depending on the type of movement, it can go up a bit, but around about £50 sterling. So in, in, in the price of our watches, 
if this watch that I've got on, which is the C60 Tide, as you'd expect, uh, if the C60 Tide watch costs us, uh, the selling price is 895, because it's cost, you can take away 150 pound. If it wasn't cost, you can work out what it would be. That's as simple as it is. So we, apply, you know, we apply the same rules to the cost price architecture and selling price architecture that we apply to everything else, whether it's cost or not. So, you know, if uh, if people tell you that uh, it costs hundreds and hundreds of pounds to have a cost certified watch, it's not true. Um, it costs that. Would I would have thought that the, it was in the hundreds, honestly, to, to cost certify a watch? No, and you, you would think that, judging by perhaps the selling prices of some of the people's watches, but no. Um, and this is, again, part of the, the mythology um, of, of the watch industry and the lack of transparency. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit on a transparency kick at the moment um, and yeah, encouraging, um, encouraging more and more people and brands in the watch industry to to open up about stuff like this because i think my own view is that in the next 10 to 15 years would as well as sustainability being one of the major important trends of the watch industry the other major trend i think is going to be transparency um, i think people are going to demand to know much more than they've ever been allowed to know about what's really going on and what's really involved in the creation of their watches and what's really involved in the cost price and how much of how much of what they're paying is uh, you know is being given to a celebrity and how much it, all of this stuff people i think are going to increasingly demand to to want to know and those brands who aren't prepared to be open and honest um, I think we'll lose out. What is there to lose by being transparent? Nothing if you're not hiding anything. Yeah, exactly. I, I was watching a um, Adrian at Bark and Jack the other day doing a review, and he yeah. mentioned a certain a certain brand which I won't mention. But he said that this brand, the the price is almost a feature of the watch. It's almost yeah. a specification of the watch is the price. People buy it because. It, it costs what it costs, not necessarily because that represents the value that the watch and its components is. I think you're totally right. I know a lot of the watch review community certainly thinks, thinks the same, and we do our part to try and talk about what value is in terms of the watch the watch will. But you're right, especially last year when prices have pre-owned and went a little bit crazy. It was that those lines were getting blurred between price and value yeah absolutely right it's uh there's some crazy stuff going in in the watch industry at the moment and uh some of it uh, a lot of it i don't think is uh is beneficial to to the consumer and if it's not beneficial to the consumer in the long run it won't be beneficial to the watch industry in the long run well that's been fantastic so the new tide watch is available from today it's the 27th of august and the straps are available online, and they, they have been for a few weeks, aren't they? And they're available. Yeah, there's a there's a big collection. Twenty and twenty two, I think they're available in correct the size wise. Yeah, spot on, and you can also uh, buy them in titanium and uh, titanium and uh, bronze um, clasps as well. So, well, Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us again on Casual Watch Talk. My pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Well, guys, let us know in the comments section down below if you've got any questions and we'll see you next time on Casual Watch Talk. Thanks, guys. Bye.